Hey everyone, right now, two new packages that I've been waiting for for ages have just arrived. One here is the 4K Smart TV, and the other one is the 2K 144Hz monitor. For now, let's unbubble wrap both. For this video, we'll be focusing on the 4K Smart TV I got from Shopee for an unbelievable price. Here's my current setup, CPU on the left, 32-inch 1080p TV in the middle, and a 24-inch 1080p monitor on the right. And now, we have this big-ass 43-inch TV right here. I'm not even sure if it will fit properly. The numbers say they should, but I hope they're right. So this is the A-Vision 43 UL800. It's a 43-inch 4K Ultra HD Smart LED TV. 4K meaning it has a native 3840 by 2160 display resolution, twice the size and quadruple the amount of pixels of a 1080p screen. Contrast ratio is 30,000 to 1, while brightness is 220 nits. Color is declared as 1.07 billion or 10 bit, but when I check on my PC, it registers only as 8 bit or 16.7 million colors. It has a refresh rate of 60 Hz and response time of 9 milliseconds. These are average specs for your normal TV, meaning it's good for everyday use, but not recommended for high FPS PC gaming like first person shooters. Power supply is 100 to 240 volts using your standard power plug here in the Philippines, and power consumption of the unit is 85 watts. Input ports include 4 HDMI ports, 2 USB 2.0 ports, 1 Ethernet port, 1 AV in, 1 antenna in, 1 audio out, and 1 digital audio out. It also has a built-in ISDBT receiver. For the operating system, it uses Linux and has built-in applications like YouTube, Netflix, Facebook, Twitter, and many more. We'll explore them one by one later in the video. Here's what's in the box. Guidelines on how to hold the TV. Here are the stands. Free wall bracket. We'll mount the TV on a different video, so we'll put this aside for now. User manual. Actually surprisingly decent despite the TV being dirt cheap. Instructions on how to mount the stands. The remote control with two AAA batteries. Nice to see that Netflix and YouTube buttons there. And warranty certificate, I think. In case you're curious, I'll show you their service centers around the country later. Physical measurements. The thickness from front to back is about 3 inches. Length is 38 inches. Height without the stand is 22 inches. Bezels on the top, left and right is half an inch. While the bottom bezel is 3 fourths of an inch. At the center back, we can see the VESA mounting holes. I believe they're 100 millimeters. On this side, we have the power cable and manual buttons in case you run out of battery or if you lose the remote. Here, we see the technical details of the unit. At the bottom, we have one USB 2.0 port, the Ethernet port, and three HDMI ports. On the right side, out of the frame, are the audio out and digital audio out. On this side, we have one HDMI port, one USB 2.0 port, the antenna in, as well as the audio video in. Alright, let's try turning it on. Okay, but first, let me remove my old TV so we can have more space. Nice, it fits perfectly. Although, I needed to change the orientation of my CPU in a way that you won't see the glass panel anymore. A waste not to see the bright lights inside, but I've already have it figured out. I'll be changing my case to the Dark Flash DLV22, which has a right side glass panel. Perfect for this setup. 
It also has a motherboard facing down, so it's kind of different. If interested, I'll be doing a video about it soon as well, so better subscribe and have that bell icon checked. We finally got it turned on. Let's start tinkering with the menu settings. There are multiple layers of menus here, and in the first one, we have the picture mode. We have sports, standard, movie, home, and user. It basically just presets with different contrast, brightness, color, sharpness, tint, and backlight settings. Selecting user will choose a customizable mix of your own that I'll show in a bit. Next is the sound mode, same stuff as before, but with sound. To be honest, I'm quite satisfied with the audio out of the box, so we won't be messing with the options here for now. Football, not really sure what this does, but it looks like it increases the contrast and brightness when turned on. Not really my thing, so we'll turn it back off. When you click more, we'll go to the next layer of menus. Here in picture, we get the same options. But when you click user, you'll now have the option to customize the parameters. When you go to advanced settings under picture, you'll get all these new other options. Color temperature, if you want to adjust a more bluish or reddish display. For my taste, nature is best. SDR to HDR, turning it on will increase brightness, contrast, and color, just like what happened in football. I think this is not real HDR, as my PS4 says this TV doesn't support it. It may be fake HDR, but it can look good in a lot of cases. The next four options, NR, MPEG NR, dynamic contrast, and fill mode are new to me, so we'll ignore them for now. And also, I really didn't notice anything different when I turn them on anyway. PC mode. It says it's best to use it when you're using the TV as a PC monitor, but turning it on made the display look washed out, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Aesthetically, the screen just looks better when it's turned off, so I'm turning it off. Next, we have more options for sounds. Again, let's ignore them for now. Network, here's where you connect the TV to your Wi-Fi as well as configure the Ethernet port. System, we have language, HDMI options, environment, these unselectable options I don't know about, restore to factory default. Lastly, support. You can update the TV via USB or online. You can also check the version here, run the installation wizard, view the EULA, as well as change the app settings for Netflix. Up next, let's test the built-in media player. I'll be playing a 4K MKV file. It's compressed considering it being only 6GB for a 4K movie, but it's still 4K. Alright, looking good. Very clear. Now let's try loading some anime from the same USB. When you click menu under remote while playing a video, you get these options. What was disappointing was that the TV couldn't read the subtitles embedded in the video file. I tried different anime shows, and nope, I guess their software is limited in that area. Since we're here, here's the difference between turning the HDR on and off. Again, despite it being fake HDR, it's pretty good. It pops the haulers out more without making the video quality a washed out mess. I might turn it on or off on varying occasions depending on my mood. Next, let's load up Netflix. I already put in an account here so we can go straight to the shows. Good. Moving on, let's try YouTube. Pressing the directional button brings up these options. The usual YouTube stuff where you can adjust the video resolution. And wow, despite the quality we're on, which is only 1080p, it's still clear as hell. And here's playing a movie from my PC. Now let's try playing using a PS4. Yo, 
You're coming with us. Nice and easy. Don't think so. This is not a PS4 Pro, so it only outputs 1080p. Despite that though, image quality is still very sharp and is pleasing to the eye. Audio is also really good. In terms of sound quality, it even beats some of the more expensive branded ones out there. So what's Soldier Boy's deal? Is he one of us now? He's got balls, this, uh, uh, what was his name again? Cloud. Cloud Strife. Right. And he isn't a soldier anymore. Still, he's a professional, unlike the rest of us. I'm glad to have him. <laughs> this is a one-time gig. When it's done, we're done. You can also attach a keyboard through the USB port if you want convenience in typing when on YouTube or Netflix. Other smart TV options is something called the smart TV apps. When clicked, you'll see all the streaming apps. Not sure if they are free, but I won't bother since I don't know any of them nor am I interested. One interesting feature though is Toon Goggles. It's kind of like Netflix, but it's specifically for kids and it's free. So tons of wholesome cartoons here to watch for your kids. Let's try out Screencast. For those who do not know, this is the feature where you can project your phone screen to the TV. And some devices even has desktop mode, where the screen will look just like a desktop and you can use your phone screen to navigate. Playing games brings a different feel as you'll be playing on a much bigger screen. Kinda impossible though if you constantly need to look at your phone to touch it. The TV also has a built-in browser, but I don't recommend it because it's a bit slow even when using a mouse. You're better off using screencast or just simply using your phone. But if you need it in some special situation, say for showing something to a group of people, then it's there. Here we are in my PC, and as you can see, the TV's resolution is native 3840 by 2160 or 4K with app icons resized to 150% because 100% just looks too small. And we're now taking a quick dead pixel test. And yeah, no dead pixel. Very nice. Okay, so in conclusion, for 13,000 pesos or 264 US dollars, it's just ridiculous. It's legit 4K and image quality is really good. Obviously, they cut corners. They have to, so they can bring it down to this price. You can't complain. But I bet they've thought about which corners to cut best since most of these problems are negligible. Let's list the pros and cons. Pros. It's the cheapest in the market. You just won't find any 43-inch 4K television. That's cheaper than this. It's the cheapest, but definitely not the worst. Image quality is good enough. I constantly find myself in awe when watching 4K footage. It also has lots of customizable color settings for video, so if you don't like the colors out of the box, you can change them to your liking later. Surprisingly, it has very good audio quality, and it's loud. Volume turned to just 3 is enough for my room. It's a smart TV. It has a built-in media player, Netflix, YouTube, and a lot of other apps like those I've shown you earlier. It has a fast and responsive navigation. It almost feels the same as using a high-end smart TV with a strong processor. There's also the easy installation of the stand and there's a free wall bracket to boot. And it's sold straight from the company. It has warranty and has many local service centers around the country, so there's some peace of mind. Cons. Fake HDR. Being a 4K TV, it should have HDR tech, but no. Although the quality of the simulation is very good, I'll give them that. About an okay-ish 220 nits. Nits is a measurement of brightness, and 200 to 300 is an average number for lower tier TVs. And for real HDR TVs, it should be above 400. The screen build quality is of lower tier and glossy, meaning it's a bit reflective. If you will have bright lights directed at the TV, 
chances are you'll see some form of reflection when viewing dark videos. And it's probably 8-bit and not 10-bit. I haven't confirmed yet but that seems to be the case. But hey, average non-techie people won't see the difference and won't care about it. So let's not dwell in that. The user interface is not 4K resolution. So expect the graphics of the menu and settings to be a bit blurry, including YouTube and Netflix. But that's just the menu, so I don't really mind. Just saying that it lessens the experience a bit. The operating system is limited. Unlike Android, here you are stuck with the pre-installed apps and you won't have the plethora of apps Google Play has to offer. Codecs are a bit lacking. Like I said, I was kind of disappointed that it couldn't read subtitles embedded in an MKB file when that's been a common format for years now. But it doesn't matter since I'll just be playing my anime from my PC. There you go. The pros and cons. Lots of pros that will give you the bare minimum but legitimate 4K experience. While there may be a lot of cons, the important part here is that it's 4K with a good enough image quality. The rest are just icing on the cake. Right now, it's still at 12,999 at Shopee and of the 256 people that bought this TV, 153 of them gave an average score of 4.8. Now that's customer satisfaction right there. And 3 to 4 years ago, you can only buy 4K TVs at around 50,000 pesos or a bit over a thousand dollars. Now 13,000 pesos? It's mind blowing. It's a great time for entertainment technology. A vision. Thanks for bringing your products here in the Philippines. I would never have thought that I would be able to buy a 4K TV this soon. I did a bit of research on the company and I kind of like their mission vision, which states Aviation is a lifestyle brand that focuses on the Filipino culture. Being a player in the Philippine consumer electronics setting, we understand the importance of providing quality products at affordable prices. Avision is generous in terms of features and quality, friendly and responsive to the needs of consumers, hunk in design and innovation, and sweet in terms of prices. Our vision is to be in the homes of everyone. Like an ordinary Filipino, we focus and strive to bring our vision to reality. A vision. Bring your vision to life. Very nice. As I mentioned earlier, they have a lot of service centers scattered around the country. Here's a list if ever you're interested to know. And currently, they have 30 around Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Here's their contact number as well. And alright, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And whether you like it or not, you know what to do. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And see you in the next one. Bye!